There's a huge skills gap in enterprises looking to move to AI. They need to address it. Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to AI Insights Innovation, where we talk about the realities of AI and how to make AI work for your enterprise. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, Vilas Geek, and analyst with Akeem Research. Let's get started. So this one kind of came out of the uh, discussion we had last week around the fact that lots of AI projects are failing, um, 80%, uh, according to the data that we saw last week. Uh, some people were taken back by that. They, they, they don't, didn't understand what, were the, what was the root cause of the failures. And if you look at it, and we mentioned this last week, that the lack of skills seem to be the root cause of most of the failures. People aren't um, trained, they're not skilled, they're not making the right decisions, they're using AI ineffectively, they're using the wrong use cases, just any number of reasons that these uh, these projects are uh, are taking a dirt nap. But the skills thing, the skills gap that we have out there is probably the largest reason, and if you talk to the CIOs that are out there, they would agree with that. So. Current state of AI training is only 40% of organizations offer former formal AI training. And so that's weird because if you think about it, probably 100% of organizations out there have a uh, AI strategy in place. They're starting to move uh, to building and deploying generative AI systems, agentic AI systems, and the ability to weaponize AI to provide some core business value as to what the company needs. And so very much like cloud was uh, in 2000 2011, the desire to move very quickly is there, but the skills aren't there within the organization to take them where they need to be. And so organizations need to figure this out pretty quickly if they're gonna spend billions of dollars, which is what the uh, analyst firms are saying over the next few years, you're gonna have to have lots of smart people in the organization. They're gonna tell you and instruct you how to use this technology. AI is not simple. Uh, you need data scientists, you need AI engineers, you need ethics specialists, you need uh, data data quality assurance specialists, lots of moving parts in making these systems work effectively. And I think by not having those skills, we're going to see the failure rate continue hovering about 80%, which is going to be money um, being wasted, money going down the drain. That's unacceptable. So why is this occurring? Well, the, the major um, issues cited would be employers employees lack time for training. So employees aren't given time to go train, and so they're not training. And there, I think there has to be an allocated time where they're taking a couple of weeks here and a couple of weeks there uh, to go off to formal training, or they're taking uh, some sort of a structured uh, video training approach, they're attending some sort of class, they're bringing in an instructor. They're, they're not necessarily allocating time for them to understand how to use this technology effectively. And employees don't feel like uh, their employ employers are doing that. They're just not going to spend time doing it. They're just going to guess their way through it. Probably learn uh, learn on demand, uh, pick things up via um, you know some tactical video training things like that. But they're not going to get the core skills they need to uh, round out what it is to do a generative AI architecture, uh, a data structured analysis. Uh, AI engineering, all the things that need to work in order to make AI functional uh, within these organizations. Also, the rapid advancement of AI technology requiring frequent updates to training materials. Many people who I talk to take my training or I'm consulting with um, consider this such a fast-moving target, and certainly generative AI is that, that they're concerned about taking particular training with spe specific technology, for example, AI technology that's native to AWS Cloud or Google Cloud, something like that. By the time they get out of the training, uh, it's already time to update the training. We've moved off in different directions using different tools and technologies. Uh, the technology trends has changed, and that's a larger concern. So the rapid advancement and the quick movement of technology is causing some consternation in the fact that people don't think they're going to get the value out of the time that they're spending in training. Also concerns for AI replacing traditional job roles, and they're looking at AI as a potential something that's going to replace either themselves or many of their fellow employees. And so they're a little concerned about that. So in other words, if AI is gonna come in and function like a lawyer or function like an analyst or function, which it, it is able to do in some instances, that's gonna disrupt uh, jobs and that's gonna disrupt the culture of the organization. And so they may consider AI to be an enemy of that. And that needs to be dealt with as well. So 
we all can agree that AI training is necessary, and typically it's going to be on the critical path for most enterprises that are trying to move into AI. So what do you do? Well, the impact on the job market is going to be that if people are lacking some of these AI skills out there, it's going to be difficult for them to be hired, certainly in the IT realm. And there has to be an investment in AI training um, and also some sort of uh, job retention and future job creation strategy that's put in place as well. In other words, we're going to train our staff up. We're going to hire people who have AI skills. We're going to invest a lot more in making everybody smart around how to use AI technology specifically. And we're also going to build a culture of trust. We're going to build a culture of job retention and the, un the ability to kind of explain to them the value of this, why it should be invested in, why they should participate in it, and also companies giving them paid time to go do the training. That's, I think, what's lacking now. Companies are, are, uh, don't understand what training is needed. Um, they don't understand the amount of time that needs to be, uh, be dedicated to training by the employees, and the employees don't feel like, unless their employer understands that, that they should really care about it as well. So, and at the same time, the same employer is trying to hit the accelerator on using AI for any number of different business reasons. And obviously, you know, that dog won't hunt. And I think that's why we're seeing the 80% uh, AI project failure rate in 2024. I suspect unless uh, core changes are made, that's gonna continue to 2025 and 2026. So somebody has to figure out how to fix this. And normally that's up to the enterprises to put together a strategy for how they're going to understand their skills gap, where they need to be, how they're gonna leverage AI. That needs to be understood. Their existing as is state and the existing technology, where their to be state needs to be, and then looking at the skills gap between where they are now and where they need to be, and what kind of talent needs to be around to make these things work. It really comes down to something that's that simple, but this is calculations and analysis that I think many enterprises aren't willing to do yet. So what about strategies for AI training? First and foremost, you need executive level endorsement of the AI training initiatives. It has to be funded. Uh, it has to be something the employees believe that you're caring about. And if you care about it, the executives care about it, their leadership cares about it, they're, they'll care about it as well. So it has to have funding. It has to have resources. It has to be uh, prioritized. It needs to be spoken about a great deal um, by the executive level folks in the organization who are running the company. You need to um, democratize training for employees at all levels, uh, the ability to, in essence, have them learn in the way that they want to learn. Some people learn via classrooms. In other words, they, they like going away for a boot camp kind of uh, format. Some people like to learn uh, via video training where they can operate at their own pace. Some people learn by doing, um, you know, and at different ways in which people want to understand this stuff. That's all available to them. Obviously, on-demand video training, uh, that's commoditized at this time. There's lots of great training you can find just out on YouTube. Um, but, uh, you know, Coursera, LinkedIn Learning, you know, all these other organizations exist out there that are getting on the AI bandwagon, and they've created lots of courseware uh, in terms of how you're able to train and understand AI from being a generative AI architect, which is incredibly complex, to being an AI engineer, also incredibly complex, to uh, data science capabilities and understanding of that path. So you need to figure out personal training paths for each of the employees out there. One, there's not going to be a one-size-fits-all kind of scenario where everybody has to go to this class for two weeks. And enterprises love doing this. And I think it's it's completely unproductive. So you need to understand what the employees are going to be need to be doing. They're all going to have different skill sets that are going to be beneficial to their role. And then the ability to... Um, uh, in essence, map a path through different courses and different training, and either it's going to be on the job training, technical training, vendor training, any number of things. It's just very complex maps uh, and how particular individuals which is personalized for their needs, how they learn, what they need to learn, very important, not, not having everybody understand the same stuff because everybody's not going to be doing the same jobs. Uh, and then the ability to measure metrics to see the value that's coming out of that training. That needs to occur. So the benefits are easy to define. Improve employee productivity and efficiency, enhanced and create creation of new jobs, uh, you know, building harmony between human creativity and AI efficiency, the ability to understand what AI is and what it's able to do, 
And uh, I think at the end of the day, also not villainizing AI. I think people have a tendency to look at AI as 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, where it's going to shut down the hatch on you. Um, some of that stuff may be true, but at the end of the day, AI is a very pragmatic technology. It's been around for a long period of time. We're able to do more things with it now. And certainly with generative AI, you know, eye popping cool stuff uh, is able to come out of it. But your ability to find the right use cases in the enterprise is going to be a core a core value, but also everybody getting comfortable with the use of AI in their day to day roles, understanding what it can do, but also understanding what it can't do. Um, there's not a lot of magic when it comes down to AI, and one of the things that uh, you know I learned many many years ago when I got into AI that it that it's not 2001: A Space Odyssey, that it's just another way of defining and how you're going to build an information processing system. And this way, there's a huge amount of value that can be found there, but we have to figure out what that value is. So what our enterprises need to do, there needs to be dynamic and just-in-time course design for employees. In other words, this is dynamic and this is going to be changing, and your ability to put someone or a group of people in charge, depending on how your business is, in defining course strategies and learning strategies for each individual person, groups, people who exist in the organization, and providing that in just-in-time ways. In other words, we're not trying to put anybody in the same static courses for the next several years. That won't work. But the ability to design and redesign these things and how people can have different learning experiences. Use of AI in designing and delivering customized training solutions. If we're going to learn about AI, let's, let's use AI as a tool. So the ability to leverage uh, AI paths to look at existing as-is skills uh, where the 2B skills need to be and mapping out a course based on what's going to be best and most productive and most optimized for the systems. And those tools exist today. Uh, you can find them. They're on demand. They're fairly cheap. Uh, most of the uh, training organizations will provide them to you. Use them and figure out a path to make AI most effective for your enterprise. So the other thing to keep in mind is this learning needs to be continuous. And so you're you're hiring people. I always hire people that are continuous learners. And they're not requiring that, uh, that, that they're forced into training. In other words, they're, they're able to learn in an informal way because they have to keep their skills current. And so we're looking for continuous learners, but we're also looking to provide continuous learning. So the ability to create uh, institutes and organizations that are, that are uh, you know, creating deals with some of these uh, um, you know, training companies, whether it's human classroom training or on-demand uh, video training or a mix of both, which is typically what people are going to use. And the ability to make it available to employees so they can t continuously learn. Obviously, AI over the next several years is going to be changing very quickly. Um, and your ability to change your skills and understand different aspects of AI is going to be directly associated with your ability to find a very valuable and a very well-paying career path. And I think employees understand that. And they're willing to do the continuous learning as long as they're, they're provided the time and they're provided the resources to make it happen. Also showcasing AI training success stories within the organization. Um, I'm always taken back by the fact that, uh, you know, teachers and, and police officers and, uh, you know, people who were uh, privates in the Army uh, got out into the IT space and without a college degree or a master's degree or anything like that, were able to re-engineer their skill sets to get into cloud computing, get into AI, get into different aspects of IT and increase their learning potential. And the ability to kind of highlight those things, because those things used to be very scarce. Now there are uh, huge amounts of people who are able to pull that off. Um, those should be highlighted and those should be stressed in the organization as the potential for training and why you need to be in training. There has to be some selfish reasons why you're spending additional time to go into training. It's not easy to do, but your ability to kind of tie training with a career success, career success and your ability to get paid more is going to be the big motivator there. And I think that's fine. That's, that's why we go to work. Uh, obviously, we want the satisfaction of building stuff and being as successful at our jobs, but also the ability to carry home a decent paycheck and have a, a decent uh, way, uh, have a decent life uh, is, uh, is core to that as well. So this should be surprising to nobody. Um, it's undeniable that AI is going to be important for enterprises to be successful with AI. And uh, the recent uh, you know, news around the, the failure rates around some of these AI projects should motivate many of the enterprises to get this right. Uh, it's fairly cheap based on the investment and the value that you get. So the 
investment in training and the investment in your employees and the investment in hiring the right people and the investment in hiring mentors and the investment in hiring consultants and you know all the thing that's going all the things that are going to make us successful with AI um, it's important really important and it's something that enterprises should be dealing with today and I'm not sure why they're not dealing with it in an active uh, proactive way um, but f and let, now that they're seeing the deficit in doing that I think many enterprises are going to be returning to planning their AI training uh, strategies and getting their employees trained as quickly as possible and also hiring people who are trained. So it's the role of IT leaders and executives in, in championing this uh, for the AI learning that needs to occur within these enterprises. And so if you're thinking about moving into AI, which pretty much every enterprise is, uh, your ability to access your existing skills and your ability to look at the skills you're going to need to need to have to, to be successful is going to be on the critical path for all of this stuff. And it's weird that I even have to say this now because we've gone through this iterations with the same sort of iterations with cloud computing and service oriented architecture and enterprise application integration and client server and you know uh, complex distributed systems and dealing with all sorts of business problems and not having the skills to make that happen and losing out on some of the value that's able to come out of these technology trends. Now AI is kind of the mother of all these trends right now. Businesses who get this are the ones who are going to be able to be successful if they're able to leverage AI as a true uh, innovative differentiator for their business. In other words, they do things better, supply chain integration, customer relationship management, um, manufacturing optimization, things like that. Businesses are able to kind of take their whole game to the next level using AI technology. You just got to have the skills around to make it happen. That's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, also, uh, check out... Uh, the other stuff at the cloud, at the cube, excuse me, and also Silicon Angle. Uh, lots of great uh, anal analysis there. Follow me there. Follow my peers there. And uh, until next time, you guys stay very safe. Cheers.